Okay, let's start dealing with the concept called as refraction of light. We have seen what refraction of light is in the previous session. So today we will have a quick recall about what refraction is basically. And then we will proceed to a specialized case of refraction. And that is called as total internal reflection of light. Friends. Okay, so we want to understand that phenomena and Accordingly, we will try to understand the applications of that phenomena as well. So let's start with, you know, what refraction is. A quick recall about what we have studied earlier. So we all know whenever a ray of light moves from one medium to another in an oblique sense, it's going to change its path. You can see it's changing its path, the incident ray. We talk about the normal and the refracted ray. So what we can assume from this is the ray will change its path. Okay, this phenomena is called as refraction. Now, I stands for angle of incidence over here, whereas R stands for angle of refraction. Now, whenever a ray of light is moving from, you know, a rarer medium to the denser medium, you can see the refracted ray, it will bend towards the normal. So in that case, if you observe the diagram carefully, I or angle of incidence would be greater than angle of refraction. In case two, if you observe, the ray of light is moving from denser medium to the rarer medium. In that case, the refracted ray moves away from the normal. So in this case, if you observe, the angle of incidence comparatively is lesser as compared to angle of refraction. Whereas in case three, if it is not obliquely incident, now I'm telling you why this word obliquely is important to be mentioned over here. Because if you don't mention that, then case three is not explained in your definition. And now what case three explains, okay, if the ray is vertical, not oblique. That means angle of incidence is zero. Refraction is not taking place. In this, you can see angle of refraction is zero. There is no change in the path of the light. And therefore, it was very, very important for us you know, uh, to mention the word oblique when we define refraction. All right. Now, when we talk about refraction, the specialized case of refraction would be you know, total internal reflection of light. Now let's understand what this total internal reflection of light is. All right, now we all know basically whenever a ray of light moves from denser medium. Now you can see when I'm saying N1 is the refractive index of medium one, and N2 is the refractive index of medium 2. And if you, you know, compare them, N1 is higher as compared to N2. That means the ray, which is the incident ray, it is moving from, you know, denser medium to the rarer medium. So when a ray of light moves from denser medium to rarer medium, you can see it will bend away from the north. That means, Comparatively, angle of incidence would be less as compared to angle of refraction. So this is the first fundamental thing which we should know when we talk about total internal reflection of light. The ray has to move from denser medium to rarer medium. It, if it happens other way around, that is if the ray moves from rarer medium to denser medium, then in that case, you won't experience this phenomena which is called as total internal reflection. Even if the name suggests that it is reflection, basically it is the specialized part of refraction. Basically. And I'll tell you how. Okay, this is something which we need to understand. Let's move ahead then. The first point which I wanted to make, so 
far as this slide is concerned is you know the ray has to move from denser medium to rarer medium so if you have noted this down please let me know so that we move ahead when i say note it down all the people who are attending it for the first time you are supposed to take screenshots of this which will serve as notes for you people okay most of you so yes good great so let's move ahead then friends let's move ahead yeah so the first point which i have made is you can see the ray has to move from denser medium to rarer medium now what is critical angle this is something which we need to understand so critical angle friends is an angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction you can see the refracted ray is grazing the interface over here that means to keep on increasing angle of incidence the angle of refraction will also increase and it will increase to an extent that it becomes 90 degrees now when the angle of refraction becomes 90 degrees what happens to the refracted ray the refracted ray grazes the interface interface means the part which separates the two medium you can see such angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees and the refracted ray grazes the interface we call such angle as critical angle friends so critical angle is an angle of incidence specifically for which the angle of refraction would be 90 degrees this is one point second point is the refracted ray will graze the interface okay this is second point which you need to understand so the first slide was telling you that the ray is moving from denser medium to rarer medium and therefore the refracted ray is bending away from the normal now this is the second slide which is telling you for a particular angle of incidence called as critical angle the angle of refraction is 90 degrees and the refracted ray is grazing you can see the interface over here a specifically if you talk about angle of refraction in this diagram it is 90 degree so please make a note of it before we move ahead once you are done with it please let me know so that you know we proceed further okay most of you say done okay now you let's move ahead then now what i suggest over here is if i increase the angle of incidence beyond the critical angle then this refracted ray instead of getting refracted further there is no scope of refraction now so what will happen to this refracted ray instead of getting refracted in the other medium that is air this ray will get reflected in the water you can see in the next diagram so this thing happening okay you can see if i increase the angle of incidence beyond critical angle then the refracted ray instead of getting refracted in the other medium it gets totally internally reflected this phenomena is called as you know, total internal reflection of light so basically it's a reflection of light but it is a specialized case of refraction of light in a, in a way you can see so under the given circumstances what we can say i will be always less than r this is one thing okay and the angle of incidence has to be greater than critical angle for this phenomena when i say this phenomena i am specifically talking about total internal reflection of light okay so this phenomena to occur two conditions are important one the ray of light should move from denser medium to the rarer medium second the angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle now what is critical angle it is the angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees 
so then under the given circumstances the snell's law can be established as sin i upon sin r in this case would be mu2 upon mu1 where mu2 stands for refractive index of air which can be considered as 1 and mu1 stands for the refractive index of water pressure so please make a note of this diagram very important diagram and once you are done with it let me know that we proceed further So let's move ahead then. Most of you say done. Proceed. So in this situation, the angle of incidence, which is equal to critical angle, will be given as sine theta c will be n two by n one in this. Okay. Remember this also. This is important thing. make a note of this and then i i explain you the applications where we use this phenomena of total internal reflection of light yeah in the comment section i'm getting to know that most of you are done with it so i proceed further now let's understand where we use this phenomena okay total internal reflection of light Okay, great. So you can see here what we will do when we talk about total internal reflection of light. We can talk about fiber optics communication. Okay, now how a fiber op optic communication will take place. But prior to that, again, let's have a quick look. You can see the ray is moving from, you know. Uh, denser medium to rarer medium therefore the red part that is the refracted ray is bending away from the normal you can here it is bending away from the normal you increase angle of incidence the angle of refraction also increases for a particular angle of incidence you can see the angle of refraction has become 90 degrees all right so beyond that if you increase then this refracted ray will you know instead of getting uh refracted further you know you can see this ray gets reflected totally internally reflected so this is one diagram which is making things clear to you people you know one diagram is explaining all the situations so please make a note of this okay so most of you say yes okay Now let's move ahead. Then let's proceed further. Right. Let's see what are the applications of total internal reflection. Right. The first application can be Snell's window. Okay. Now this is a picture which is showing you how a fish would find the outside world. Okay. Here you can see. Have a look at this particular diagram. This. picture is being explained with the help of this diagram where you can see you know the fish is trying to view the outside world above the water surface you can see then it means the topmost point so these are the rays you know which which would move from you know denser to rarer medium now if that happens you can see if this was incident ray this is refracted ray but from fish point of view or from fish's eye if you see the you can see the reversibility of light can be applied over here you know so whatever was the refracted ray becomes the incident ray and whatever was the incident ray becomes the refracted so let's say how fish is trying to look at the outside world so this is the incident ray and this is the refracted ray why this is happening in this manner because from fish if you talk from fish's perspective then the rays are moving from water to air that means they are moving from denser medium to the rarer medium and therefore you can see in this case you know the rays are bending away from the norm so for a particular angle you know you can see 97 total angle i'm talking about i'm not talking about the 
angle of incidence over here, you can just divide it by 2 in that case. For that angle, you can see the ray of light gets the angle of refraction becomes 90 degrees and it grazes the interface. That means beyond this point, all the rays which come to the fish's eye, they are going to get internally reflected. And therefore the fish, the same thing, it's like owing to symmetry, whatever I'm talking about this point, it is all applicable to this point also. You can see. All right. Then what happens is because the rays get internally reflected beyond this particular point, the fish won't be able to see the outside world. So if you try to frame what would be the region which a fish can see outside water, you take a top view from this, it will look like a window, okay? And we call such window as Nell's window. That's how you apply total internal reflection of light to you know, uh, measure the diameter of Snell's window. And Snell's window is the, you know, uh, basically the range of the area through you know, what the fish can view outside water. So please make a note of it. The diagrams are important. So, just give me a moment. Yeah. So here you can see in this diagram the ray of its angle of refraction is becoming 90 degrees. You take this and theta is critical angle. You can just find out sine theta as 1 upon mu alpha. These calculations are equally important, friends. Okay. An angle of cone. So if you take if you take a top view of it, it would be like a cone. Top view would be a circle, like a window over here. This is the diameter I am talking about. This is the diameter. From this point till here, the fish can view the outside world. The birds which are flying over what? Right. Please make a note of it and then let me know. Yeah, most of you say done. Hopefully you have understood what total internal reflection of light is and how we need to apply that concept for solving problems in the near future. So if this is 97, you can see the critical angle. Suppose this is a line which is parallel to this line. And this is a transversal. If the entire angle was 2 theta, one part of it can be theta. If this is theta, then this can be theta. As this is 97, obviously it has to be half of it. Critical angle in this situation is 48.5. Now it will be fixed for water, air, pair, for a fish, basically. Hopefully you have noted this down. So let's move ahead then. There are other applications as well where we apply total internal reflection of light waves. Let's move ahead. Okay. Here you can see when I'm talking about you know, fiber optic strand, that means a fiber optic cable, uh, what it comprises of. Let's understand that. So the inner part of the fiber optics cable, which is used for communication, okay, is called as core. And the refractive index of the core, obviously it's an optical material, because the signals which are going to pass through this would be optical signals, or whatever signals, the voice and the video signals are converted into optical signals, and then they are made to pass through it. But the inner part will be comprising of core, that's what I want to tell you, with a higher refractive index. Whereas the outer part is called as cladding. And it is also an optical material. But the refractive index of such material is comparatively low as if you compare it with core. Now why we are doing that? Because we want the ray of light, which is a signal for us. Signal converted from a video signal or audio signal 
into a light signal or optic signal we want that signal to get totally internally reflected therefore the first thing first condition which we are trying to satisfy over here if we are maintaining the core ka refractive index greater than the cladding right so let's move ahead i'll show you with the help of a diagram now what happens now the signals basically they get converted into the light signal and the light signal is sent in this manner where you know the signal will move from core to cladding that means the ray will move from denser medium to rarer medium now obviously the angle at which it is incident will be planned in such a way that the angle of incidence is a critical angle and therefore you can see the refracted ray is grazing the interface and angle of refraction is 90 now if it is the angle becomes greater than critical angle then what happens the ray instead of getting refracted upward it will get totally internally reflected and same thing will happen at this point also that means what i mean to suggest is there will be multiple reflections of the signal and in fraction of seconds you know it will cover the signal will cover kilometers many kilometers in fraction of second without losing its intensity and that's why that's how fiber optics cables are being used for fiber optics communication modern day communication and they use the concept of total internal reflection of light which we have studied right now hopefully things are pretty clear till here please make a note of this diagram so that you can see now why we use fiber optics communication because the signals won't lose its intensity and energy and the clarity of you know the signal would be maintained even if it travels many kilometers hopefully done so please give me a feedback yeah most of you say done let's move ahead then okay so there is another diagram which also explains you the same thing how multiple reflection takes place use this laser or led light source basically so here things are more clear uh, what is core which part is considered as core which part is considered as cladding and what is buffer cladding and so on okay so you just make a note of this take a note of this diagram also this is a multi mode fiber is there means you can just vary the modes of signal transmission basically with the help of such kind of communication now friends so let's move ahead then hopefully mostly this is done okay another example or application which we come across in day to day life for total internal reflection of light is a mirage now what is mirage we all know what a mirage is normally in deserts we come across oases specifically oases means uh, greener zones or water bodies and we get misled we go to that place and suddenly we realize there is nothing such kind of thing is called as mirage okay. now why it happen so let's say this uh, lady is traveling on a camel in a desert and obviously during day time what happens the heat the land gets heated the air layer near the land you can see uh, they become warmer if they become warmer means the volume increases and thereby the density decreases now if density decreases the lower part of air layers they will have lower refractive index compared to the upper ones so you can see the rays coming from the top basically so for her her eyes are concerned. you can see the layer the rays would move from 
you know, from the top or from the bottom, you can see. From her eyes, if you talk about, you can see. Layers come. This, there was the image, the reflection of this image is coming in this manner. And if the angle of incidence becomes equal to critical angle, this is denser, this is rarer. Right. Because the lower air layer, they are warmer, the volume increases and the density comparatively decreases. As you move from bottom to top, you can see the density will increase. That means at the bottom, the density is less. Optical density. Whereas at the top, it is more. And you can see the sun rays, they get you know, reflected basically from the trees and here is the source of the ray that source is moving from denser to rarer medium say for example these black lines are normal now at a particular point what happens if we talk about a particular location where she stands and the tree stands okay the angle of incidence here you can see becomes greater than critical angle and therefore the ray instead of getting refracted further it gets reflected totally internally reflected in her eyes so in her eyes inverted image will be formed that's how our retina is being developed naturally so inverted image of that tree along with the image of sky you can see the brain will interpret that there is the trees are located somewhere here and not there with the reflection of sky blue color of sky she may find that the oasis is over here she may proceed in that direction but by the time she reaches there you can see you know the was just a mirage. So this phenomenon is called a mirage. Yeah. So for mirage, what what is required? Okay. Before I show you the two points regarding mirage, please make a note of this uh, picture so that you know the things become very easier for you to interpret. Once you are done with it, let me know so that you move forward. Okay, so let's move ahead then. The second diagram also, please make a note of it. Interesting diagram. How Mirage looks like. Basically. Once you are done with this, then I will show you what are the conditions for Mirage. Okay, great. Let's move ahead then. That's a two important condition for mirage to occur. Total internal reflection should take place and there are two conditions for that. The light should travel from denser medium to rarer medium and light should hit at an angle greater than critical angle. Please make a note of these two important conditions for total reflection and mirage. Okay. So hopefully things are pretty clear to here, right? Great. Let's move ahead. Yeah, so these are some pictures where you know you come across mirage in day-to-day -day life. So you can correlate mirage to total internal reflection. So you know the same thing is being explained how mirage takes place. Please make a note of this also. This person will move here for the tree, but the tree is located somewhere else. And that's why when he reaches here, because of the virtual image being formed, this person gets befooled or something like that. So make a note of it and just let me know once you're done with it. I can show you a few more pictures.
कैसे चाहिए इन डे टू डे लाइफ यू कम अक्रॉस यू नो वेन यू आर ट्रेवलिंग ऑन हाईवे एट टाइम्स यू फील दैट इट हैज रेन्ड बट बाय द टाइम यू कम टू दैट प्लेस देयर इज नथिंग लाइक नो रेन बिकॉज़ ऑफ मिराज you know you come across such images in day to day life ideally when you talk about it you know, just a simple mirage